girls and boys. Today, we're going to read a story called Caps for Sale. It's a tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. This word tale, it doesn't mean like a tail on a monkey or a tail on a dog or a tail on a cat. It's the word tail like fairy tale, story. So it's the story of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. What's a peddler? Oh, a peddler is somebody that sells something. They walk around and sell it. They don't sell it in a store. The peddler in this book is this man right here. He's the peddler. So he must be selling something. The stuff that a peddler sells would be called his wares. Whatever he's selling, he'd have lots of them. Oh, it must be all these hats. But we don't call them hats in this story. We use the word cap. Caps is the same as hats, like baseball caps, baseball hats. So, but this word isn't hats, it's caps, caps, caps. Caps for sale, a tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. It's told and illustrated by Esfer Slobodkina. Caps for sale. Once there was a peddler who sold caps but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First, he had on his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the streets holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. Upset his caps? His caps can't get angry at him. What do you think the author means? So as not to upset his caps. Why would he have to hold himself up straight? You're right. He doesn't want them to fall off. He doesn't want them to get knocked over, so he has to stand up very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he, and he walked out of town slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, thought he, and he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put his hand to feel if they were straight, first his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. Hey, they told us that already, didn't they? They told us what order those caps were in. It must be important. It's part of the pattern. When we retell, we should be able to tell that part too. So we should be able to say in the beginning of the story, the peddler was selling caps in the city and nobody wanted one. He carried his caps on his head. First the checked cap, then the gray caps, and then the brown, then the blue, and at top, the red. He went for a walk in the country and he sat down against a tree.
So he had checked his caps and they were all there. So he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. Do you notice anything different about him? What? But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. Where did his caps go? He looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree. No caps. Then he looked up into the tree. And what do you think he saw? On every branch sat a monkey, and on every monkey was a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cap. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, Z, z, z. This made the peddler angry. So he shook both hands at them and said, You monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook both their hands back at him and said, Z, Z, Z. They're like little copycats, aren't they? So first, what did he try? He tried shaking his finger and saying, give me back my caps. Then he shook both of his fists and he said, you give me back my caps. And each time, did the monkeys copy him? Mm -hmm. Now he felt quite angry and he stamped his foot and he said, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, zoo, zoo, zoo. By this time, the peddler was really very, very angry and he stamped both of his feet and he shouted, you monkeys, you, you must give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, what did they say? Z -z -z -z. At last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground and began to walk away. What do you think is gonna happen? Really? Is that what you think? Well, let's find out. But then each monkey pulled off his cap. And all the gray caps and all the brown caps and all the blue caps and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. Why did those monkeys throw the caps? Because they were doing what? They were copying him. The peddler threw his cap. So the monkeys did too. Copycats. So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First, his own checked cap. Then the gray caps. Then the brown caps then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly he walked back to town calling, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. 
the end. So we can use the pictures to help us retell the story, even without the words. So I remember in the beginning of the story, the peddler had all his caps on his head and he was walking around saying, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. And nobody wanted any caps, not even a red cap. And he got hungry and he went where? Out to the country and sat against the tree. And he took a, a nap and he slept. And when he woke up, he had no caps on at all. He looked all around and he didn't see them. Then he looked up and he saw monkeys with caps and they wouldn't give them back. He did try, he tried asking and he shook his finger and he said, you give me back my caps. And it didn't work. The monkeys said, zip, zip, zip. And they shook their fingers too. So then what? Oh, that's right. Then he tried shaking both of his hands and he said, you give me back my caps. And they said, zip, zip, zip. And they wouldn't. So then he stamped his foot and he tried that. And they just stamped their feet. So he stomped both feet and that didn't work. So then he threw his hat down and the monkeys copied him again and they threw the hats down too. And then what happened? He picked them up and he put them back in order. What was the special order that they went in? First the checkered cap, then what? Then the gray ones, and then what? Then the blue ones, and then at the very top, the red ones. Thank you so much for reading this book with me. Remember, when you read a book, or you listen to a book, you should be able to say what happened in the beginning, what happened in the middle, and what happened at the end. It's called retelling, and it means that you're thinking about the story. It's very important to do that part of your job as a reader. Thank you so much for listening to the story.